For this video, I am continuing my trend this week of showcasing the decks that I've been playing in best of one. Uh, if you're not familiar, I'm playing the best of one format because my collection just isn't big enough to support playing the traditional best of uh, three format quite yet. And if I can't build the decks I want to play even in best of one, then I certainly can't afford quite yet uh, to build them with a sideboard on top of it. So we're getting close. I'm hoping to start doing more traditional content next month as I continue to grind out uh, you know, more and more of a collection, but for now, we're just focusing on best of one, and I just wanted to share updated versions of the decks I've been playing. So uh, this is my most recent White Weenie list. Uh, it's got some additions from War of the Spark, so if you've watched some of my other videos that uh, were pre-War of the Spark, a lot of this is going to look very uh, familiar, but uh, we're still running a lot of one drops, right? But I've added Law Rune Enforcer. This is very good both offensively and defensively. Uh, using this to tap down potential blockers is actually very relevant. And using it to slow down bigger threats in mid-range matchups like against Gruul has also been very good for me. Um, the rest are your traditional one drops. We've got uh, both of the Ascend one drops in here. Hunted Witness for a little bit of resiliency. Dauntless Bodyguard because it's also a knight. So it works very well with History of Benalia and so on and so forth. Uh, and then after the one drops, uh, right now I'm not running any two drops. I know a lot of people love Adanto, but because I play best of one, uh, it's not that good in best of one. Most of your control decks are running uh, Craving, which nukes Adanto. And if you're running into mono red, Adanto is a bit of a trap. You don't want to keep paying for life because that helps them. So I've just cut it. We go straight from one drops into three drops because I want uh, maximum marshals to buff all of my one drops. Uh, three copies of Gideon, that's a new addition. Uh, four Histories, I'm running four Unbreakables and four Loxidans. Because again, my goal when I'm playing White Weenie in best of one is on turn one to play a one drop, on turn two to play two one drops, and on turn three do something that buffs them and swing. Like that is that is your game plan 100% of the time with this list, at least the way that I play it. Uh, one Conclave Tribunal is here just as a, uh, a panic button, if you will. Um, but we're we're all about the offense with this list, so I'm not I'm not going overboard with uh, tribunal inclusions. And uh, this this is the list. So like I always do with these videos, I've talked about the list. We're gonna go play a couple of games so I can show the deck off. You can see it in action and decide if it's something that is up your alley. Game one on the old white weenie, and kind of have what we want. Ideally, we want this Conclave to be another one drop, but hopefully we'll draw one by then. Nonetheless, we have three lands, two one drops and a three drop. Again, our goal with this particular deck uh, is to go one drop into one drop, one drop into uh, three drop that buffs the team. This is a singleton tribunal in our list that sadly we ran into. And it looks like, well, it looks like we get the mirror here. All right, well. We do have our, our one drops. And we'll go ahead and get this going. Our opponent has one of the new sleeves. Actually kind of like that. That's one of the Narset ones. And tough decision here. Marshall means we can swing with more, but uh, history lets us be greedy. And I think we want to slow things down with this. I think I want to get rid of their law rune enforcer here. We just don't want them to be able to flip this. I could just remove that entirely, I suppose. But it would also leave me with no blockers, and if I'm going to let them attack, I want it to be for as little as possible. So uh, we are we are going to do this. And again, kind of a tough call here. Because Legion's landing is certainly annoying, but... Uh, we're going to just take the Law Rune Enforcer. It's 
So we'll get some incidental damage in if they've got another land and a three drop. They can do that as well, but we're going to go for maximum greed now that we know it's a mirror. Ideal top decks at this point and going forward are unbreakable formation. It's fantastic in the mirror. Means you can go on the offensive without really worrying about losing things. Our opponent taking their time to consider their options now that we've slowed them down a bit anyway. Kind of hoping maybe that they just didn't have another land and they were banking on flipping this and uh, looks like they might just time out. Oh, they were debating on how they wanted to handle this uh, other legion's landing it would appear. Oh, and they are on a, a blue version. Okay, well, we did find our unbreakable formation, uh, which is rather nice, but I think we're going to go with the marshal here first. All right, so that gets the concede. Formation probably would have done so as well. Uh, we wanted to play the marshal because then that would have been buffed by history when that went off the following turn, and then unbreakable would have uh, just kind of <laughs> locked up the game. Um, but that's an ideal start. That's exactly what this deck is looking to do. Uh, one drop into two additional one drops into uh, impactful three drops. Uh, let's go play one more game just so, again, you kind of get the gist of what we're trying to do. Game two on the White Weenie as we try to continue pushing forward. And uh, this is okay. Uh, we have the three planes. That's beautiful. We have uh, three one drops, but ideally uh, we don't want a fourth. We want one of our impactful three drops. Uh, nonetheless, I don't see anything here that says throw this back. And it looks like we're up against Mono Red. Now against Mono Red, I like to lead off with the Snubhorn, just because it acts as a, a blocker to kind of stem the bleeding. And whatever we end up playing this following turn... Oh, interesting. It's not Mono Red. It's Rakdos. Okay. That... That is going to change things for us quite a bit here. Uh, we'll go ahead and develop an Aspirant uh, into a Bodyguard. Now, we did find one of our impactful three drops. So we have that going for us, but... We're not likely going to keep our other options alive, if I had to guess. Right now, they're figuring, you know, what do I do here with this Firebrand? So they're going to take the Carnival and then probably ping this Aspirant as well. So that's the bad news. Now, the good news is they're slowly running out of cards. And this Gideon is um, kind of nice. However, I think we want to lead off with this so that when we play Gideon next turn, we can immediately give this lifelink, and that's a, uh, a game breaker. Now, there's a strong chance this just gets burned out. Uh, but that would have happened either way, so... Alright. In this instance here, we are going to go ahead and develop the Gideon. We're going to go ahead and give Gideon the old uh, plus one, plus one. Now, the downside, though, is we wanted to give this lifelink. I believe in you, friend. However... This gets in our way quite a bit now, doesn't it? So, we'll also develop this uh, witness. And at least for the moment, say no attacks. Now, the good news is, it kind of means that this has to stick around uh, as a blocker. Because otherwise we'll get to utilize our lifelink. Yeah, alright, so there's the removal we were expecting. And now they're just going to go right for Gideon. So... Nothing. Retreat. Bit of an issue. As they remain ahead on tempo. And uh, we're going to do this. We're going to take the turn off, if you will. Even though it does mean that they jump ahead. 
but it means that we can maybe flip this this following turn. And uh, that'll allow us to start making tokens. It also hopefully means that this will get us some health back with the old lifelink. Change things a bit in our favor. We just need them to not find card draw. And they did not, I'm assuming. And that's why they conceded. So uh, Gideon didn't end up getting the lifelink that we wanted, but was enough of a, a thorn in their side that it bought us time for us to find a Loxodon and... Uh, close out the game. I know that these white weenie games go fast, but that's part of the attraction, in my opinion, of uh, playing white weenie. So I'm sorry this video is a little bit shorter uh, than some of the others, but if you made it this far, I appreciate it, and I hope to catch you in the next video.